Welcome to Medieval Russia, fellow kings. Our goal today is to get the Land of the Rus achievement by forming the Tsardom of Russia slightly earlier than it was historically, starting as Rorik the Troublemaker, a Viking who showed up here one time and conquered a bunch of land from the local Slavs, and then the Slavs got together and kicked him out. But then, the Slavs started fighting amongst themselves and decided things were better under Rurik, so they asked him to please come back. So at the dawn of the year 867, we rule one of the larger independent realms in Eastern Europe, with a fantastic character, a brainiac wife, a good heir, and some loyal tribal chiefs as our vassals. I was also thinking I might reform the Slavic religion, but yeah, forget that, the holy sites are way too far apart. Declaring war on day one of the game? It's more likely than you think. Why yes, I am making my concubine and royal priestess also be my doctor. Why do you ask? I'll be taking all your land and all your money off your hands, that sounds fair. Oops, I blinked and already took over another single county tribe. My next target has invested in training some skirmishers, so I'll train archers, because archers beat skirmishers. Truly incredible tactical depth going on here. I burned through all my prestige, so I can't declare war anymore. Uh, let's go borrow some from the neighbors. Honor the alliance I made with you? Uh, yeah, sure thing, buddy. Look, guys, I know I left Scandinavia to go live in Russia, but I'll come visit to raid you. In CK2, the strat for overseas raiding was always to go to England or France or Italy, but it looks like this time around it's not really worth the effort. Even the capitals of the big feudal realms don't have that much more loot in them than the crappy little tribes right next door to me. Kind of feels useless. The Scandinavians are all busy with the Lothbrok invasion of England, so I really can just raid up the coast of Sweden with absolutely no resistance. What? My local peasants are upset that I don't speak their language, follow a heretic religion, and I'm forcing them into a constant state of war? Who could have predicted this? Alright, Minskoids, you have the honor of being the target of my once-per-lifetime subjugation war. Hippity-hoppity, you're about to be my property. I am a tactical genius. Uh-oh. I've been wounded in battle. Oh, I'm already better. Um, the priestess concubine doctor was definitely the right call. Everyone knows war is important for a tribal ruler, but the diplomacy tree is probably actually better. Why? Because that middle tree leads to basically unlimited war juice. That was a lot harder than I expected it to be, but we did it. We forcibly vassalized all of Minsk. Gardariki, more like Gardathiki. Still got a long way to go before we can form Russia, though. Hey, Chernigov, great work becoming independent from the Khazars. That's actually really impressive. Unfortunately for you, I just unlocked Duchy Conquest Wars. I was looking around for potential allies, and the Estonians are actually doing pretty well for themselves. Gonna be real with you though, Chief, keeping a leper as your concubine doesn't sound fun for anybody involved. I don't want to start another war when the peasants are about to rise up again. I'll just relax and do some administrative tasks while I wait for things to cool off. And by administrative tasks, I mean raid. Oh man, I've been Captain Ahabbing with this white deer for a few years now, and while I was hunting to relieve some stress, it showed up and made me even more stressed, so now I'm gonna have a mental break. Oh, I can just start working out as a stress reliever and become healthier and stronger as side effects. No harm done. I love my wife Ingrid. She's given me three healthy and bright children, she's brave and just, and she throws a good feast. Who says this game can't be wholesome? The guy I force vassalized is trying to socially manipulate me and undermine my authority? That's not gonna fly. He has made a damn fool of himself on more occasions than I can count. Perfect. Ah, the sweet sounds of noble warfare. Wait, somebody over here has siege catapults already? Who is that? Oh, it's the Magyars, and they're helping someone conquer Chernigov instead of invading Bulgaria like they're supposed to. That's kind of funny. Oh, now since I just took over Chernigov, the Magyars are hostile to me. That's kind of not funny. The question now is, would it be better to just surrender the one county and make them leave me alone rather than pouring resources into fighting them off for little benefit? So I went and chose the second option, and it's not going super well. Barid, the lands of Chernigov are in a tough state. You're one of my best warriors, and I think you're just the administrator they need. A 53-year-old, vengeful, reckless, possessed Viking berserker. Perfect. Alright, so I'm starting to turn things around, but only because the Magyar troops are nowhere to be seen. What are they doing? Oh, they're getting attacked by the Khazars. Shalom and thank you, kind nomads. So, someone managed to raid one of my cities while I was busy fighting my war, but then they left without taking even more plunder when they could have. <laughs> Idiots. My son Borkvard has been murdered! Uh, granted, if I was gonna lose one, I'd prefer it be him, because he didn't inherit any intelligence traits, but who would do such a thing? Finally, we can call a truce on this pointless war. You might be wondering why I chose to do a Russian playthrough. Honestly, it was mostly for the Slavic QTs, and I'm not even ashamed of that. The Lithuanian royal family's dynasty motto is Heal Me. <laughs> I didn't know Genji mains were a thing back then. Wait, what's mine? The spirit of the horse grants us faith. Great, our family is blessed by Glitterhoof. 
My poor wife Ingrid has TB. We can go with the cautious or a drastic treatment, but I think I'll leave the choice up to her. She chose... poorly. What a trooper, giving birth to a daughter while literally coughing your lungs out from consumption. Ingrid is best girl. Nice, she recovered. My daughter-in-law is trying to romance me? Uh, Sure. King Rurik has gone to Valhalla at the age of 60. He never did catch his white deer. The good news is that I conquered a bunch more land we need in the north of Russia. The bad news is, is that the new King Helgi's half-brother, the one with the wife who was trying to seduce Rurik, split off and became independent. For now. Rurik ruled the Russian people well, but he was never truly one of them. Helgi, on the other hand, follows the Slavic religion and has lived almost his entire life in Novgorod. Makes sense to me that he would be the first one to truly adopt Russian culture. So, apparently before I started playing as Helgi, he was secretly practicing witchcraft. And now I've inducted my oldest daughter into the fold as well. I recruited this guy from my prison and gave him land because he's a good warrior, but uh, I think this is actually the leader of a peasant revolt. <laughs> uh, at least he'll be a man of the people. I've snowballed pretty hard at this point. These smaller wars are like taking candy from an eczema-ridden baby. Look, nothing personal, brother, but I definitely think our dad intended these lands to be mine as well. And for some reason, I also get the feeling your wife was trying to bang him. Oh, Helgi was the one who killed Borkvard all those years ago. And my 15-year-old vassal is blackmailing me about it. The absolute audacity of this kid. I respect it. Just stay quiet about it and I'll make you my spy master. Should I tell my wife that our daughter is a witch? Am I also sharing that I was the one who made her a witch? Aw, my wife's dead. That's too bad. What? They're voting for my brother to inherit the kingdom? But that's gonna split the titles between him and my son. It'll ruin everything. Oh, people don't want to vote for my son Hastin because he just inherited my wife's land, so now they see him as a foreigner, even though he's literally my firstborn rightful son. Just vote for him and that foreign land will become our land, you idiots. Alright, I need to conquer enough land to form Russia before Helgi dies or there are going to be some problems. Look, Magyars, you've had plenty of time to go do your historical invasion of Bulgaria. You're occupying too much rightful Russian land and it's time for you to go. Dude, I'm a third of the way to winning. Why would you ever think I would want to call a truce? So I'm sieging their capital across the river with about half my army, which is 3,500 troops. They're bringing 5,000 across the river to kill me, but I've got the other half of the army back here ready to reinforce. If I win this battle, I've won the war. Let's see how it goes. I can induct my half-sister into witchcraft as well? Absolutely, the coven must grow. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Oh, I was joking, but you actually can create a witch coven if enough members of your family are witches. That's sick. This is not good. I'm 53 and I can't convince enough of my vassals to vote for the right heir. It might be time for some drastic measures. Forgive me, my lad. I must take your land today so that you can inherit all my land tomorrow. Are you winning, son? And after taking over just a couple more tiny tribes, we've finally done it. Hail to the Tsar, baby. Now how's the rest of the world looking? Let's see, France is split in half, Bavaria took over all of Germany, Bulgaria exploded even without the Magyar invasion, and the Pope conquered half of Italy. So, nothing too crazy, all things considered.